Well, cutting PLA with a saw or scissor or pliers or knife, it's really hard. It doesn't really work. And uh, what do you do when you want to cut PLA, 3D printed plastic? Well, I have the solution. I got this really big townhouse from the city of Tara Kickstarter. Uh, I didn't back the Kickstarter, I didn't have a 3D printer at the time, but I bought this from Drive Through RPG, which is a good site for uh, various fantasy and sci fi STL files for 3D printing. Uh, the building is really big, uh, it's actually too big for my board, so I printed it once more at 80% uh, that fit really well with the other buildings I have from printable scenery and 3D layered scenery. And I'm going to use the Proxon hot wire cutter to make a ruin out of this building. Um, I just, uh, through accident, found out that it's hot enough in the hot end here on the wire to cut PLA. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do. And uh, it's uh, actually easier than you would think. Start by uh, sketching out... Uh, where you want the ruined uh, areas to be. So I wanted to, to keep the chimney so I uh, kind of went from there and uh, in a slope shape uh, tried to make a nice uh, ruined uh, shape here, a big hole into the building uh, that kind of lets you uh, have the inside playable and uh, I wanted to keep as much of the roof as I could because I thought that looked kind of good and have uh, this big part of the building be torn off and uh, while you're cutting PLA it's going to be a lot of fumes so use a mask if you want to keep your brain power for later hobby projects uh, when starting just uh, heat up the hot wire cutter and start cutting it's actually uh, a lot quicker than I thought when I decided to try it. Uh, you can just uh, uh, start cutting and uh, try to follow natural lines in uh, the model. I, I follow the shingle tiles here as much as I can but I will uh, do stuff to the burnt out or ruined area afterwards uh, to uh, make it look good because uh, when you print PLA, uh, when you print uh, these kind of buildings they're hollow and especially this big part is uh, as you can see it doesn't have a sloped roof so it's uh, it looks really weird on the inside uh, it's just uh, infill uh, which is uh, what the printer used to uh, to create stability inside the print so uh, as you can see there's a big uh, pattern in there a zigzag pattern and I will deal with that later but um, on the walls, uh, as you can see, this uh, building has a playable interior. It's uh, detailed with floors and, and uh, windows and stuff. And uh, when I do this uh, with the floors, I follow the planks here uh, as much as I can. So it kind of looks like they've fallen off or broken off. And when they have like a cut there, I follow that cut and uh, go back and forth to create kind of a natural shape to the ruined floor parts. And uh, on the walls, I try to follow beams and stuff on the outside to, to <clears throat> kind of create a natural look there too. And uh, the walls especially look very weird when you uh, cut them since they're hollow. Uh, the reason I use the handheld uh, wire cutter is uh, two things. It's very flexible when you're... Um, moving around you have to cut kind of irregular patterns and especially the the big flat one uh, has that the wire on that one is way too thin it just breaks off so don't even try that uh, this one has a really fat wire which uh, is very suitable for this and if you push too hard it will bend and the hot wire cutter 
the metal parts there will kind of shift and uh, you will have a bendy uh, wire that is not very good you can see here it bends a little bit when I when I'm pulling it but uh, if you do it in in kind of a moderate speed it, it will work fine and uh, when you do this um, dry fit it and try it out and when you put it on top on another floor you can you can make a little mark on the next floor and start from there I realized that I uh, ruined too little of this building I wanted more of the walls removed so I <coughs> kind of uh, did a new sketch here uh, to to have more of a playable interior if, if it's uh, too much uh, space inside the building you can't move around miniatures and that's uh, no fun for gaming so uh, I kind of go don't overdo it in the first uh, step you can you can always make more parts ruined but if you you can't put stuff back so start small and then just cut more of it off if you feel that you have uh, done kind of a too small a ruined part so uh, that's usually what I do I, I I start with something I think looks good and then if I realize it's too small I just redo it. Sometimes you have to go through the cut once again because uh, uh, the plastic melts and it kind of fuses the parts back together sometimes. So uh, just go over the cut again with the cutter and uh, it, uh, it kind of works out fine. And I followed the windows here uh, so they're kind of burnt out or broken so I um, I try to follow natural lines in the model to make it look good because uh, that's how stuff like this kind of burns out and ruins naturally. So uh, I will deal with the windows later on. I will remove some of them and keep some of them just to give an irregular ruined feel to it. But this um, uh, way is, uh, I think, looks really good. I'm keeping the foundation intact because uh, uh, stones kind of uh, aren't ruined the same way as wood. Wood kind of burns and, and uh, leaves this irregular and and uh, natural pattern. But stones, you have to cut them uh, individually, which is really hard with PLA and it requires a lot of sculpting later on. So <clears throat> I decided to leave the foundation as it is and uh, I think that looks really good. I, I think that it wouldn't be ruined the same way as the other stuff if it burned. And uh, for the roof part I just cut out the infill here. Uh, just be careful not to cut on the outside but I just removed as much as I could. Uh, just cutting into it and uh, uh, just getting stuff out as much as I could. Uh, it's kind of impossible to get all of it out but uh, since the roof would have some kind of beams and support structures on the inside. I decided that if I let some of this be and uh, put a lot of filler and sculpt stuff, uh, it would look like a burned out uh, roof with kind of, if you had like hay or stuff on there to insulate, uh, that would leave a really rough texture. So as uh, heat and fire kind of moves upwards in a building burning uh, I thought that I would get away with this and I I'm uh, sure you will agree in the end <laughs> if not leave a comment or something and uh, give me a hard time uh, about it and uh, if you have other ideas I'm really uh, excited to hear about them uh, I've never seen anyone do this before so uh, I'm guessing when you try this you'll learn stuff and uh, just uh, maybe we can share ideas. So this is what it looks like here and uh, I decided <laughs> to cut off even more because I still thought it was unplayable in, uh, in the area where I drew there. Uh, so just keep cutting uh, and uh, yeah be very careful because this is uh, hot stuff. Uh, the hot wire is really hot and it kind of melts plastic which kind of drips uh, off sometimes so uh, you get this stuff on your hands and <laughs> if you're really un unlucky you get it in your eyes uh, I haven't had that misfortune yet but 
I will probably be using some safety goggles for this because uh, when you when it snaps out it kind of squirts plastic uh, small beads of plastic everywhere and that's uh, really hot stuff and it gets on your pants and fuses with them so wear something uh, you're not too fond of not your Prada jeans when doing this uh, this is construction pants time or your worst uh, leisure suit pants and um, uh, be careful with the with the hot wire cutter of course I mean it's really hot and you will burn yourself uh, really bad if you hit your fingers and uh, but that's a key factor with the hobby we use knives and stuff like this all the time if you're in the hobby you know how to be uh, careful hopefully or you should probably get another hobby um, at this stage I was uh, pretty satisfied with how it looked I realized that this top floor was a bit loose so I uh, uh, had to glue stuff together at this stage because uh, it would just fall apart and um, instead of using uh, hot wire stuff for the windows since they are already open here they're kind of uh, have, have this mesh I just used a plier uh, uh, a cutter to remove them which uh, kind of leaves a really good uh, result since it's, uh, it doesn't remove all of it it, it leaves some of these uh, kind of mesh stuff uh, hanging out it looks really uh, naturally broken if I do this on a building with uh, windows sculpted I use the soldering iron you can see there on the bench uh, which is uh, really good for just poking out stuff uh, since you can't use the hot wire cutter when doing just a hole uh, I usually use that soldering iron and just push holes into it and that actually cuts uh, really nice too and uh, after deciding that I had cut enough of it off uh, it's time to make kind of a ruined uh, burnt out uh, surface to this and I use some uh, rapid filler uh, which uh, kind of dries in about half an hour or something and I just uh, yeah straight from the tube just uh, get it on there uh, on all the hollow areas and uh, where you want to hide the old uh, plastic stuff here and uh, I use a old uh, cheap brush to just slather it on and uh, just be sure to cover all the holes and all the hollow details and uh, stuff that you where you've made some mistakes and uh, on the inside of the roof I just like a big toothpaste blob I just slathered it on and uh, used a brush to to uh, smear it out and kind of create a, a, a yeah natural burnt out finish to the top of the roof and uh, I also look Put a little bit of in uh, in the corners here because I mean, when a ru building collapses, it, it creates kind of debris and stuff. Uh, so I uh, put some in the corners of the floors. Uh, too much debris c kind of makes it unplayable, but a little bit is nice. And then I used uh, this is kind of a paint texture uh, granule stuff that I bought from a construction store. It's really good, uh, kind of sand texture, but it bonds really well with glue and and uh, this kind of paste and uh, that's the uh, that's all for making a ruin actually and then paint the damn house which I did and uh, I have videos uh, earlier videos that describe how I do this when I paint ruins but it's painted the same way as the other ones so uh, this is the end result and I think it looks pretty good uh, if you agree or if you disagree give me a comment in the comment section and please subscribe and like the videos uh, it helps me out uh, and uh, makes it more fun to make more videos a lot more will come on this Mordheim board that you can see in the background here <laughs>